We've officially entered the era of AI directly inside of your internet browsers. And for some reason, the world's most used internet browser, Google Chrome, is not in the mix yet. You have to actually use Chrome extensions like Perplexity or something like that to actually get AI functionality inside of your browser. Now today, Opera just announced new AI tools are now available in Opera and Opera GX for you to test. And with this announcement of new AI functionality inside of Opera, I thought, let's put it to the test against some of the other browsers that already have AI functionality built into them. Back at the beginning of March, Brave announced that they were adding AI directly inside of their Brave search engine. And by extension, it also works in the Brave browser. And of course, as a lot of people have probably already seen, Microsoft Edge has this really cool AI sidebar built into it now. So let's take a look at these three browsers and the AI functionality that's built into them so that you can make a decision if maybe one of these browsers is a better option for you. Now, let's start with Brave. Now, technically, Brave is built on top of Chrome. So the underlying code is really just Chrome with sort of a new skin and additional functionality built onto it. However, Brave just recently rolled out their own AI inside of their Brave search engine. And by default, if you use the Brave search bar up here, it's kind of like using an AI search engine. So if I was to type something like, what is the best AI art generator and hit enter, you'll notice right at the top of my search results, it's got a summarizer and it says, Dolly is widely considered to be the best AI art generator of 2023. I'd say that's highly debatable, but it gave me a summary and you can see right here, it says powered by Brave AI. Now, according to the Brave website, it says, unlike many others that have released similar features recently, we do not rely on third parties, nor do we limit access due to scalability concerns. The Brave summarizer relies on our owned and operated models that are highly tuned to be as efficient as possible at inference time. So they're not using something like GPT-3 or Anthropic or any of the existing large language chat models that are available. They've claimed to develop their own large language model just for the search inside of Brave. Now, while the AI functionality doesn't seem to be anywhere else in the browser yet, you can do a pretty quick search for anything you can imagine right inside of the top search bar and get a response summarized right here inside of Brave. For example, if I type, who is Matt Wolf? It will probably tell us about the golfer. Matthew Wolf is a 22 year old professional golfer on the PGA Tour. I said Matt Wolf with an E, not Matt Wolf with two Fs. At least when I look at the search results down here, it shows my YouTube videos. Let's ask it a question about itself and see how self-aware it is. What are the main benefits of Brave AI? Well, when I search that, it just gives me some search results. So I don't believe it's super self-aware yet. What are the benefits of chat GPT? So it'll answer questions about the benefits of chat GPT, but not the benefits of Brave AI. Chat GPT offers a range of benefits such as improved efficiency for businesses, immediate and accurate responses to user queries, etc. Let's try, what are the benefits of Bing's AI. It gives me search results for that. So while Brave did add the ability to ask a question up here in the search bar and then get a quick summary, it still leaves a lot to be desired and there isn't a whole lot of additional AI functionality built into the browser yet, unlike the next two options that we're gonna dive into starting with Opera. Now you'll notice that Opera has a sidebar over here on the left. It's a slightly different layout from what you might be used to with Chrome and Firefox and Edge and all the rest. They have some quick access links to things like Twitter and TikTok and stuff like that over here, but there's no AI button. So in order to turn on AI in Opera, you actually have to enable it because it is a test feature. So if we come up to the top right up here where the little settings button is and we click on this, you can see that there's an option for AI prompts right here and it says it's an early access. Enables AI prompts in the address bar and text highlight pop-up connected to the services such as ChatGPT and ChatSonic. So they are using third-party tools, specifically ChatGPT and ChatSonic. So let's go ahead and flip this on here. I'll go ahead and close out of this and you'll notice over on the left sidebar here, we've got two new options. We've got a ChatGPT option, which opens up ChatGPT in the left sidebar. And we've got a ChatSonic option, which opens up ChatSonic over in the sidebar. Now, Opera's AI is a little bit more contextual. So this one is really beneficial when you're in the middle of reading an article. So let's find an article real quick. Let's head over to mattwolf.com and let's play around with this article that I had AI write for me a couple months back. 
the future of business is here, how AI is changing the game for entrepreneurs. If I scroll down here, I don't really want to take the time to read all of this. I can select these handful of paragraphs here. And as soon as I let up on my mouse button, it's got two options, explain briefly or shorten. So if I click explain briefly, you can see it opens up Chat Sonic in the left sidebar here. And it says entrepreneurs can use AI to automate repetitive tasks. Implementing AI can help entrepreneurs focus on more important business activities. By using AI for business process automation, entrepreneurs can gain a competitive advantage in their industry, etc. So that's what Explain Briefly does. Now, if I come up here and click on Shorten, you can see it opens up ChatGPT and kind of does the same thing. Both of them essentially give me a little summary of the selected text. Now, I should be able to select the entire article here as well. Let's just go all the way to the bottom, select the whole thing. And you can see now it's only giving me the option to explain briefly because it appears it's probably too long to paste into ChatGPT. So let's click explain briefly. And now you can see it took this entire article that I have here and it wrote me a little summary. It also has some fun little things that if you just select a smaller paragraph, I can select this and you can see it adds some extra prompts. We've still got explained briefly, but now it's saying create a quiz question, turn it into a soap opera, turn it into football commentary. Let's see what it does when I turn it into football commentary. Here we go, commentator one. And here we have the benefits of using AI for business process automation, folks. It's like having a secret weapon that increases efficiency and productivity, reduces costs, and improves the overall performance of business. Commentator 2. That's right, Commentator 1. With AI-powered automation, entrepreneurs can make better decisions than a quarterback throwing a Hail Mary pass, using real-time insights and analysis to avoid fumbles and interceptions. It's a game changer. So kind of cheesy, but also kind of fun. Let's go ahead and select a different paragraph here. Let's select this one here and say, make a joke. Why did the entrepreneur implement AI for business process automation to save time and money, but ended up spending more time and money implementing it than they ever saved? <laughs> oh, I mean, chat GPT is not great at jokes. <laughs> All right, let's have it uh, create a quiz question. So you can see it's giving us a multiple choice question here. What is the potential outcome of implementing AI for business process automation? It will not bring any benefits to the business. It will bring some benefits, but not worth the time and effort. It can bring significant benefits to the business if implemented with proper planning, management, and execution. Answer C is the correct one in case you couldn't guess. Now, if I click on explore this, it will open up Chat Sonic here and it appears to have fact checked it for me. It says this topic is correct. Here are a few links to Google search queries related to implementing AI for business process automation. So that's really the main feature that they've added into Opera. You can select paragraphs or whole chunks and have it explain it briefly, shorten it, turn it into quiz questions, turn it into soap operas, turn it into football commentary, do all sorts of goofy stuff. Uh, I can even have this one re rephrase it like Yoda. Complex and time consuming implementing AI for business process automation can be, but significant benefits to the business it can bring. Proper planning, management and execution you must have. Mm. Sorry for the crappy Yoda impression. <laughs> Now, a couple sort of bummers about this one so far. Let's go to arcsiv.org and open up, you know, a complex paper here. And I select text inside of a PDF. It doesn't give me my prompts. So I can't actually summarize anything in like a PDF document, which would be nice because I do read a lot of PDFs. Now, if I come over here to ChatGPT and I type summarize this PDF for me, I apologize, but I cannot summarize a PDF without any information about the content or file to refer to. So it can't actually see this PDF, unfortunately. I still can, you know, copy this whole thing, right click copy, open this, paste this in here, and then it'll sort of summarize it for me. But it would be nice to just be able to sort of right click on this or just highlight the text and have Opera just pop up the same buttons to automatically throw it into GPT for me. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work on the PDFs. Another sort of bummer about this one is Chatsonic is not actually a free tool. It is a paid tool and I'm able to use it right now because I'm still on this free trial here, which gives you 10,000 words a month. But once you've used your 10,000 words a month, then you know, you're gonna have to upgrade to higher plans, which is sort of a bummer. Luckily, GPT-3 does still have free options, but we all know that GPT-3 can get bogged down from time to time. And when it does, you're probably not gonna get super great results. So that is kind of a bummer, but Opera is pretty cool with these just built into the sidebar. It just makes things a little bit quicker for you to use ChatGPT and ChatSonic. All right, now let me show you 
Microsoft Edge, which in my opinion is the one that has it implemented the best so far. So inside of Microsoft Edge, if you come up to the very top right up here and click on this little Bing logo, it opens up a chat box that should look fairly familiar if you've used Bing chat at all. You've got creative mode, more balanced mode and precise mode. And what's really cool about this is there's no extra fees, no extra subscriptions that you need to use it or anything like that. I can just type summarize this article for me and then watch as it summarizes the current article that I'm sitting on right now. Sure, this document explains how entrepreneurs can use AI to automate their businesses. And then it suggests some questions or I can actually ask questions of this article. So what are some benefits of using AI for business? What are some challenges of using AI for business? What are some common business processes? Let's go ahead and try that one. Some common business practices that can be automated using AI include customer service, financial management, inventory management, etc. Let's go ahead and type who wrote this article. The author of this article article is Matt Wolf. Does that help? I could click, what are some other articles written by Matt Wolf? It found some other articles that weren't actually written by me, but Matt Wolf's a pretty common name. So there's quite a lot. I don't blame him. Let's ask, did AI help write this article? Yes, the author of this post used AI as an example of chat GPT's capability. Now also similar to Opera, I can actually select sections of text. Let's go ahead and select this paragraph here. And then notice over here on the right sidebar, it opened up a little box that says, send selection of text to chat. I could go ahead and send that to selection of text to chat, post it from the page. What do you wanna do with this text? I could have it explain it, revise it, or summarize it, or expand upon it. So let's go ahead and say, summarize it. And I can have it summarize very specific paragraphs on the page and then continue to ask questions of that individual paragraph. Now, another thing that I really like about the Edge browser version of chat here is that I can actually go to a PDF, open it up. Let's go ahead and refresh our chat up here. And then I could type summarize the main points of this PDF and it can actually read the PDF and summarize it for me. This is awesome. This is a research paper titled EPOM, blah, 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 a lot of technical language. Now let's just go explain the main benefits of this research like I'm five. This research helps computers understand things better by combining what they see with what they read. It makes it easier for computers to answer questions about pictures and videos. This is important because it can help people find information faster and more accurately. So that to me is just amazing. And then I can ask questions of this paper as well. Why would this research be beneficial. The research can help people find information faster and more accurately. For example, if you wanna know what kind of animal is in a picture, a computer with this technology can tell you quickly and accurately. It can also help people who are blind or visually impaired understand pictures and videos better. So in my opinion, this is pretty game changing to be able to sit here and just have a chat with a PDF directly in my browser. Now I know there are existing tools out there that leverage GPT-3 and, and allow you to have chats with PDFs, but to have it right here in my browser as I come across it is pretty ideal. Now, the next thing I want to try is to see if this chat inside of Edge could summarize a YouTube video for me. So I tried, what is this YouTube video about? But unfortunately, it can't really tell me what a YouTube video is about yet. I thought at least it would read the title of the YouTube video and give me some information based on the title but instead it came back with, I'm sorry, but I don't have enough information to answer your question. Can you please provide me with more details about the video? If you have the title of the video, that would be helpful. So this tool doesn't seem to be super beneficial on YouTube yet, but that would be something that would be cool in the future if this tool was able to actually look at the transcripts behind the scenes and actually tell us what a video is about. Now, another really cool thing about this sidebar here in Edge is it's got this compose button as well. So if I click on compose, I can have it write something for me. For for example, if I wanted to write an email, I could select email, write an email to tell a potential sponsor that I'm not interested. And let's leave it as professional. Let's go medium length and generate draft. Dear Mr. Smith, thank you for your interest in sponsoring our project. We appreciate your generous offer and your enthusiasm for our work, blah, 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 blah. It just wrote this email for me. Let's have it write a blog post. Let's select blog post. Let's do long, let's do funny. And let's say, write a blog post about how generative AI is taking over the world. Go ahead and generate a draft here. And here we go. We got a nice, long, detailed blog post that starts with 
Hello, fellow humans. I'm sure you've noticed that generative AI is everywhere these days. I love articles that start with hello, fellow humans. I wanna try something real quick. I wonder if writing about something on the current page is possible. So let's go ahead and select ideas. Let's select professional. Let's go medium. Write some blog post ideas based on the current article in my browser. Is that possible? Can you do that? Nope. It wrote some ideas about writing articles for your current browser. So it doesn't appear that the compose section over here is actually attached to what's on the screen, but the chat section, when we chat over here, it will actually use what you're looking at for context in the chat, which is pretty dang cool. So there you have it. There's three browsers that you can use right now that have AI functionality built in. You've got the Brave browser where you can use the search bar to ask questions and, and use Brave's proprietary language model. You've got Opera where you can select chunks of text and have it summarize it or rewrite it or create quiz questions from it. And then you've got the Edge browser, which will actually use whatever page you're looking at for contextual clues for the chat that you're currently having with it. Pretty dang cool option. It's surprising to me that Chrome, the world's leading web browser, doesn't have AI built into it. But as we know, they just rolled out Bard. I would imagine that rolling Bard and some of that chat functionality into Chrome is probably not too far off. But for right now, I'm honestly loving the Edge browser and the functionality of chat in the sidebar. If I'm doing some deep dive research and trying to understand what a complex research paper is all about, Edge is the browser I go to to do it because I can have chat with that PDF and get a ton of detail out of it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe you're gonna switch to a new browser, maybe not. But if you wanna learn about all the cool AI tools that are popping up on a daily basis, make sure you check out futuretools.io. This is where I curate all of the cool tools that I come across. And if you just want the TLDR, you just kind of want to keep your finger on the pulse, but you don't want to dive into everything that I'm talking about, join the free newsletter right here. You click this button and every Friday, I'll send you a, basically the TLDR of the week, the five coolest tools that I came across, a handful of news articles, some cool ways to make money with AI and a few YouTube videos. I send it every Friday. My goal here isn't to overwhelm you and expect you to check out every AI tool. My goal here is to keep your finger on the pulse and give you the high level overview of all the cool progress that's happening in AI. Hopefully I'm doing a good job at that. And if you want me to put it in your inbox each week, sign up for the free newsletter over at futuretools.io. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy videos like this and you want to keep your finger on the pulse of AI, make sure you subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. That'll make sure you see more of these types of videos in your feed. All right, appreciate you guys. See you in the next one, bye-bye. I mean, ChatGPT's not great at jokes.